Okay, in this podcast, what we're going to do is take a closer look at the law of definite proportions and the law of multiple proportions. Um, if you remember from the previous podcast, this all started with Lavoisier doing experimentation with mass being conserved in a chemical reaction. And what Lavoisier came up with was what we call the law of conservation of mass which says if you start with a certain number of atoms you're gonna end with a certain number of atoms in other words you can't create or destroy mass you can simply rearrange atoms to form new compounds so let's take a look at an example of that okay let's say we started with two water molecules in other words you have H2O if you ran an electric current through that H2O what you would see happen is you would form an O2 molecule and two H2 molecules. Now we're also going to assume we start with two water molecules. So you can see you have one, two oxygen atoms to start with. Those two oxygen atoms come together to form the molecule oxygen. You've got one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms as products, two of them come together to form one hydrogen molecule, and two of them come together to form another hydrogen molecule. So you're just taking these atoms, rearranging them, and forming new compounds. You haven't lost any atoms, you haven't gained any atoms. What this experimentation led to then was the two laws that we're going to talk about. And the first one was developed by Proust, and we refer to that as the law of definite proportions. Now the law of definite proportions is pretty straightforward. Basically what it means is that if you've got a molecule, and in this case we'll take oxygen or hydrogen for that matter. If you have an oxygen molecule, the ratio is always going to be two oxygen atoms for each oxygen molecule. In other words, you're not going to have O3 or O. Those are completely different compounds. So oxygen is always going to have the same ratio of atoms according to the formula. So for example, let's take uh, a molecule that's made up of different atoms. We've got a water molecule, which is H2O. So the law of definite proportion says that the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in terms of mass is always going to be the same. So if we looked at the mass number for hydrogen on the periodic table, we would record its mass as 1. But now since there's two hydrogens, we've got 2 grams of hydrogen for each molecule. If you looked at the mass of oxygen on the periodic table, its mass is 16. So the law of definite proportion says that every time you have a water molecule, the mass of hydrogen to oxygen is going to be 2 to 16 or 1 to 8. If you had a different compound such as hydrogen peroxide, the ratio would be different then. So the law of definite proportions is pretty straightforward. The law of multiple proportions seems to be the one that gives some people some trouble. So let's take a look at that for a few moments. The law of multiple proportions says, let's say you have more than one molecule made up of the same atoms. In other words, nitrogen and oxygen can come together to form N2O, NO, or NO2. What the law of multiple proportions says is that let's say you have more than two molecules, and let's take these two made up of the same two atoms. In other words, this one's made up of nitrogen and oxygen, and this one is made up of nitrogen and oxygen. If you found the ratio of grams of nitrogen to one gram of oxygen in this compound, that would give you a value. If you found the ratio of nitrogen to one gram of oxygen in this compound, that would give you a value. If you took the ratio of those two values, you would get a whole number. So let's just do that. All right, if you look at oxygen's mass on the periodic table, it's 16. So let's say we have one oxygen atom in this compound. There's the one. Its mass is 16. You've got two nitrogen molecules. If you look at the mass of nitrogen on the periodic table, it's 14. So you've got two of them, so we're going to say 
the mass is 28 to 16. So if we compare the mass of the nitrogen to the oxygen, there's 28 grams of nitrogen for 16 grams of oxygen. Well, what we want to do is say, all right, well, if that oxygen were one gram, what would the mass of the nitrogen be? So if we set up a simple ratio there, 28 divided by 16 times one gives us 1.75. So in this compound, for every one gram of oxygen, we have 1.7 grams of nitrogen. So let's do the same thing with this compound. We've got one oxygen, we said its mass was 16. We've got one nitrogen now. And remember, we said its mass was 14. So if we did the same thing, and set up a ratio, and looked and tried and found the mass of nitrogen for every one gram of oxygen, 14 divided by 16 gives us 0.875. So in this compound, the mass of nitrogen for every gram of oxygen is 1.75. In this compound, the mass of nitrogen for every one gram of oxygen is 0.875. So what the law of multiple proportion says is if you take those two values and make a ratio of them. First of all, let's do that. 1.75 divided by 0.875, and you're going to get the whole number 2. The same thing would happen if you used this compound and this compound. What this showed, Dalton, who came up with this, was that there has to, that showed evidence of atoms. In other words, atoms show up in whole number ratios. 2 to 1, 1 to 1, 1 to 2. All right, let's take a look at one more just to make sure we understand this concept. So let's take, um, here, let's take one we haven't done. We'll use this one and let's use this one also. So again, what we're doing is looking for the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen. And you could do it the opposite way you, too. You could find the ratio of oxygen to nitrogen it doesn't matter, you just have to pick one direction to go in. So we said that the ratio, the mass of oxygen is 16 and the mass of nitrogen is 14. All right, so in this compound, we have one, or we have two oxygens, so we have 32. We have one nitrogen, which is 14. So what we wanna do is find what's the mass of nitrogen for every one gram of oxygen, so 14, divided by 32 is 0.4375. We'll do the same thing over here. Now we've got four oxygens. So four times 16 is 64. We've got one nitrogen, which is 14. Now let's do the same thing. We wanna find what the mass of nitrogen for every one gram of oxygen is. So 14 divided by 64 gives us 0.218. 7, 5. Let's take these two numbers and divide them. So I'm going to take 0.4375 and what I'm doing is finding the ratio of these two values and you can probably already see it's going to come out to be 2. Again, what this shows is evidence that atoms, ex atoms exist in whole number ratios when they form compounds. So again, the law of definite proportion says that if you have this compound NO2, every NO2 molecule is going to have the same ratio in terms of mass of nitrogen to oxygen. And that should make sense. If they each have a specific mass, that ratio stays the same. The law of multiple proportion says if you find the mass of the one element to the other and find out what that would mass would what that mass would be compared to one gram of the other, take those two values and make a ratio. That ratio will always be a whole number. And again, it's a little complicated to understand why that works, but what's important is that you realize that it showed that atoms do exist in these whole number ratios.